Hi everyone, thanks a lot for your interest in this um, presentation. We're going to give you a, a fairly brief summary of a project we did last year as part of the Co-Roamers project, the Co-Design Roadmap of Mental Health Research Strategy in Western Australia. One of the aims of the Co-Roamers project was to identify really um, what the research capacity and culture was like in, in mental health services in Western Australia. Um, to try and work out how we could help to build those capacities and that culture uh, and engage um, health services in more uh, uh, mental health research. So I'd like to start the presentation by handing over to, to John for acknowledging the country. Hi everyone, I'm John. Thanks, Pete. Um, well, first we'll acknowledge the Aboriginal people of the many, many lands and language groups of WA. Um, we acknowledge the wisdom of the Aboriginal elders past and present and we'll pay our respect to Aboriginal communities of today. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge um, lived experience as well. Uh, we acknowledge the collective expertise of people with a living or lived experience of mental health challenges. We recognise the important contribution they make and value their courage to share this unique perspective for the purposes of achieving better outcomes for all. So the study aims were to assess research capacity and culture and enablers and barriers to research involvement among, amongst um, public healthcare workers in Western Australia. And to also examine any differences in research capacity and culture and barriers and enablers to research between healthcare workers in mental health and general health um, services. So in terms of definition of research capacity, um, we define this as the skills and abilities of individuals and organisations to perform high quality evidence-based research and culture as a research environment, including how organisations perceive research and allocate resources to strengthen research processes. So I'll hand over now to Viv to talk about the uh, methods. Hi there. Um, so to go about evaluating research capacity and culture within the health services, um, we um, administered an already established tool called the Research Capacity and Culture Survey, um, and this was developed by Holden and his colleagues. Um, so we distributed the sur survey across five different health services in WA. So this included the North Metropolitan Health Service, the East Metropolitan Health Service, the WA Country Health Service, the South Metropolitan Health Service, as well as um, the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service um, in Western Australia. Um, and if we look to this next slide, um, it's just a bit of a summary of the types of survey questions that were asked. So we had the um, established Research Capacity and Culture Tool, um, and the Research Capacity and Culture Tool asks about um, a person's perceptions of research capacity and culture at um, the individual level, so their own um, what they feel their own skills and capacity are in research, um, and also at the organisational level. So we asked um, respondents about how they felt about their health service doing in terms of research capacity and culture. We also asked questions about um, their barriers and enablers to research as well, um, and these were just checkbox questions as well. Um, in addition to that, we asked a few questions about demographics. And we also actually asked healthcare workers about their research involvement. So, for example, the time that they spend participating in research activities at work, um, as well as their research outputs. So, whether they've ever, ever received any funding to um, take to take part in research or conduct research, um, as well as any publications that they've ever done as well. And we also asked about their perceptions of their health services attitudes to research. Um, so when we actually administered the survey, this was first launched, um, firstly starting at North Metro Health Service um, and then across all the other services um, starting in March. And then the survey was closed off in August 2021. So we had over 900 healthcare workers um, participate in the survey, which we're very thankful for. That's a great response rate. Um, but And then after... Um, filtering through the results just to see who actually answered questions relating to the research capacity and culture tool. We had about 701 cases we could analyse as well. So we looked at the data comparing general health with mental health workers, and we looked at comparing the individual level research capacity, organisational level research capacity, as well as the barriers and motivators for research as well. 
Um, another thing that we actually also looked at was analysing healthcare workers' level of research engagement and their views on the organisation's research culture, as mentioned before. So just looking, <clears throat> excuse me, just looking a little bit into the demographics here, there's a pretty sizable number of uh, participants, over, just over 700. There's a decent mix here, um, although fairly heavily skewed towards female, roughly 20 or a little over 20% uh, who are male. Um, those who prefer not to say are non-binary, um, quite, a, quite a small percentage, relatively speaking. Uh, majority of full-time employed uh, respondents, although roughly about a third or under, just under a third who are part-time. In the sec, from a, a splitting the sectors, I guess the mental health sector had a little under a third, roughly two thirds um, in the general sector, and a little bit of both, a small amount of both. Um, the majority of work greater than ten years in the, the industry, or, or two thirds there. Um, in terms of education, uh, and particularly higher uh, education and research degrees, uh, only a small number, relatively speaking, twenty two percent. And this was split across the disciplines here, as you can see, with clearly nursing and midwifery um, leading the pack here, and, and the other two being allied health and, and medicine, who are really strong in other, gathering up a whole range of other um, disciplines within that health sector. Um, in terms of research engagement and how people, uh, how and why and whether they're able to engage in it. Um, we ask questions around, you know, how they rate their interest in it, hours per week involved in it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, not too far from a, you know, 50-50 split in terms of research related activities being part of their jobs. Um, majority of people spent very well, you know, uh, probably, uh, what is it, 40% spending very little time uh, doing research as part of their current role. How would you rate your interest in research? Um, most people are really interested in it, um, or, or, or at least interested in it, um, but clearly not necessarily getting a heck of a lot of time to spend doing research. Uh, would you like to spend more or less time participating? Uh, you can see here that, you know, about a third, roughly a third, are quite happy with, with the volume of research they're doing, with a significant chunk who would like to do a bit more. Uh, in terms of perception of their, of their own health services um, and the perceptions of, of whether they, you know, their research is valued or research in general is valued. Um, what is it, around 60% have uh, responded with yes, they feel it is. Quite a, quite a decent chunk have suggested that no, they don't feel um, research is valued in their institutions or their organisations. Uh, in terms of health service believing there's a, an ROI on research, uh, two thirds again, or, or, or three fifths of it, 60% are thinking, yep, and about 40%, um, you know, feeling there is not a not a reasonable return on investment from research. Thanks, John. So uh, this is uh, well, quite a dense table, so I'll just talk you through it. Uh, the first column here on the left, um, is the list of the research capacities that are assessed by the tool, so the different research skills um, that are assessed, and people rate themselves on these strategies um, from one low skill to 10 high skill. And we've ranked them here from the highest rated skill to the lowest. Um, so the highest ranked skill, these light colored blue ones, uh, finding relevant literature, collecting data, integrating research and findings into practice, critically reviewing the literature, some of the moderate ones, and then right down the bottom is securing research funding. Um, so that's overall uh, for individual capacities. Um, when we looked at general health settings versus mental health settings, you can see that most of the ratings are pretty similar for these individual capacities. So people who work in general health and mental health generally rate their own capacities as being similar in terms of their research capacity. And there were no significant differences between general and mental health. Um, so that's for the individual level of capacity. But what about organisational level? Well, here are all the organisational um, capacities that, that are assessed with the tool. Um, and again, we've got overall ratings, which is combining general health and mental health. Uh, and right at the top there requires ethical approval of research activity. So it's good that that was rated very 
very highly, all the way down to the bottom, which is ensuring staff career pathways are available in research. It was very uh, poorly rated overall. Um, now, when we compare general health settings and mental health settings, you'll see here on the right, there are many more statistically significant differences between general health and mental health settings in terms of these capacities, um, which tells us that, that mental health really is languishing behind general health in terms of organisational support for research activities. So there really is a need to support mental health services to uh, increase their engagement and capacity for research. I'll hand over to, to uh, Viv now to talk about the highest rated barriers and enablers for research. Um, so as we mentioned before, the survey did also ask respondents about what they felt were barriers and enablers to them taking part and conducting research. Um, and quite interestingly, the top six barriers and enablers were actually the same for both um, general and mental health services. So we've just chosen to summarise them here together on the slide. Um, not too surprisingly, in terms of barriers, um, it's just other work roles taking priority and lack of time because healthcare workers are very busy in their jobs already. Um, that research added on top of it as well. Um, lack of funding, which I think does draw back to one of the organisational barriers um, and individual individual um, areas that were of low capacity as well, which is just not quite being sure how to apply for research funding as well. Um, lack of admin support as well as lack of suitable backfill or support for management. Um, so it's quite interesting just to note that a lot of these barriers tend to be, I guess, quite structural in nature. Um, and then when we look, I guess, in terms of the enablers or people's motivators for taking part in research, um, the top one always tends to be to develop um, skills as well as job satisfaction. And people just identifying that there's a problem that needs changing and wanting to improve outcomes for their clients. Um, another area was to keep the brain stimulated as well as a desire to prove a theory or a hunch. Um, and just having dedicated time for research was identified as a really strong motivator as well to keep taking part in research as well. So another really interesting thing is obviously, you know, we've seen that healthcare workers are actually quite interested to spend more time in research. And just looking at these motivators, we can see that it tends to come from a more intrinsic kind of um, idea around why they'd like to be engaged as well. Um, so in terms of actually the take home messages, I guess um, from hopefully looking at the results that we summarised today, we can see that there's actually a lot of room to improve individuals' research capacity. Um, but also there is a lot of things that individuals um, do have a lot of high capability in when it comes to research too. Um, we see that there's a lot of plenty of room to improve on organisational culture and capacity, and we're hoping that's something, just something that we can address more and more of health services as well. Um, and one of the other things that um, Pete mentioned as well is that we're finding that mental health is languishing behind general health and organisational culture and capacity. And again, um, hopefully we're finding that if we are able to develop a mental health research strategy, this can start to address some of these issues with time that we found. Um, another thing that we've also found is that there are actually quite cost effective ways we can demonstrate that research is valued. So an example is just communication. Um, so really letting staff know about what research is out there, how people can get involved as well, um, and just let, um, assisting people in terms of the pathways to um, conducting research when it comes to grants and things like that. So there really needs to be a high level of support and investment for career pathways, whether this may be with co-funding, um, high degree research grants, um, clinical fellowships or incentivizing research and innovation, as well as just including research in JDS so that um, healthcare workers actually have time allotted in their day to be conducting research as well. So um, we know that a lot of the health services within WA are already doing many of these things to a greater or lesser extent, so hopefully we can just continue to promote more of these practices. So I'll pass you over to Pete now. So, um... The ultimate aim of, of this piece of work was to inform the development of the first Western Australian mental health research strategy. Um, and so what we learned from this uh, program of research in terms of what the strategy needs to achieve is firstly to, to support the development of research capabilities amongst mental health workers and their organisations in particular. Um, so we need to support them through um, 
uh, workforce uh, research and evaluation training so that they know how to um, engage in research um, fully, how to benefit from it, and ultimately how their services can get a return on investment and improve the outcomes uh, of their, their uh, consumers. Um, uh, we need to promote mental health care worker-led research, so that may be via clinician fellowships for early, mid and senior career uh, clinicians. Um, we also might want to support uh, visits by national and international research leaders uh, in applied settings so that we can learn new ways of doing things uh, innovatively um, and promote um, that culture of research and innovation uh, throughout our health services. Um, promoting cross-disciplinary healthcare research uh, across the sector. Um, so not only across disciplines, but also across different uh, collaborations and partnerships across the sector. And infrastructure, build infrastructure to facilitate um, service-focused uh, research and collaborations and partnerships and sharing of, of expertise and data. And there needs to be uh, dedicated research and innovation time for our healthcare workers. Uh, we know they're highly uh, motivated intrinsically to engage in research. They see the value and importance of it. Um, and it may also help with workforce retention, which we know is a real problem uh, in the health services um, at the moment. So for more information uh, on uh, detail about this study can be found here at this link, uh, including a preprint uh, manuscript for those who are interested. I'd like to finish off with some, some more acknowledgements of our uh, professional advisory group across the Co-Romans project. Um, thank you very much to, to everyone who's contributed as part of that advisory group. Our lived experience advisory group who guided us throughout this project from beginning to end. Uh, and ensure that we did it in an appropriate way and uh, as in an impactful way. Um, I'd also like to thank the whole team. Uh, ben Horgan, who co-led the Co-Romans project, unfortunately, just before this recording, uh, was, was unavailable uh, to participate um, as, as planned, um, but Ben's um, uh, really uh, con contribution to this whole program of research was, was substantial, and uh, we're all very, very grateful for that. Uh, into the whole Corona's team. So thank you very much. We'll finish the presentation there. We've uh, done several recordings of different components of the Corona's project. So if you're interested in learning more about those, uh, feel free to, to listen to them. Uh, but we hope you found this uh, presentation informative uh, and interesting. All the best.